Welcome back to the channel. And you never guess what I've gone and done. I've been back to Dollar Tree for a load more of these solar garden lights with the massive panel on them because I've had an idea. And it's all because of successes with this. I took two panels off, you can see connections underneath. I wired them in series, that's 5 volts and up to 100 milliamps. Well, I put a USB plug on the end and I put a capacitor across to help smooth things out. And this has been really quite successful. I'll show you some footage. Here's the very simple two panel version now made. Next we'll see about the voltage and current. There we go, 5.14 volts. That's pretty much exactly spot on. No further circuitry needed. And there's the current. 100 milliamps. Fantastic. Next thing I've done is to plug in this USB lead. I've used a small one so you can tell that it is just coming straight from the panels. Right, plug it in, see if this works. There we are. Yes! <laughs> Look at that! Oh great, it is actually charging the voice recorder. So, back to today. And of course I've got these other two here, it would be another 5 volts at 100 milliamps, and I thought to myself, I wonder if we can get an amp out of this stuff. And if we can get an amp, maybe we can charge a cell phone, I don't know. It all seems just too simple, doesn't it? A couple of panels at 2.5 volts each, 100 milliamps, and times the whole thing by 10 to get an amp. That's what I want to discover today, and see what we can actually run with the biggest panel I can make. And there are actually a couple of ways you can go about this. The best way of doing it would be to keep these as regular garden lights, but make a little port on the side such that they could be arranged to be in series and parallel. That would be the best way. But the easiest way to find out if it's going to work is to take the panels off and join them up in the same way as what I've already done. So that's what I'm going to do. And then obviously if anybody else wanted to copy this, then you could go for that arrangement, put a little port in the side, do things that way. But the first thing I'm going to do is take one of these apart just to show how it's done. I'll do that. That's the light taken apart. Now, it would also be easier just to leave it like that and just desolder the wires from the circuit. Just take the red and blue off. But, I think what I'm going to do is take each panel out. Because that's the way I originally did this one and it would look about the neatest to do. As I say though, simply like that allows the light to be reconfigured again, to be rebuilt again if you wanted to use it just for normal garden light. So really, in a way, that would make sense. And just have all these lined up in the rows to create a bigger panel. But the other thing is, I've got a couple of ideas for different projects, and I need the AAA holders, I need the batteries, I need the circuits. So I'll be taking each of these out of the housing. While I'm putting these together, I would like to say that if you enjoy this content, please do consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. It's also a great community here. There's lots of very well respected posters who leave some very kind comments. So thank you if you do subscribe. Also, as you can see, I'm making these in two panel kind of sections, and that's the same as the original one. The idea is, if this doesn't work to charge a cell phone, I can use, say, 400 milliamps, 600 milliamps, whatever, to charge different other devices. But really, I'm making them the same way as I made the first one, to keep things modular. Of course, it doesn't have to be done like this, and you could, you know, connect them up together in a different arrangement. This is all just a big experiment.
You can see there how I was using the soldering iron to just gently melt the glue that holds the panel and that's because if I don't do that then there's a risk of the wires snapping off as I remove the panel. Here they all are, some stacked up over there, the others have got the glue drying for the bits of wood they've put across. But I've got a problem. If you can count those up, we've got five in the top left, and then we've got six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, not ten. And that's where the problem is. I've got that one there, but the other one is here. And that video hasn't been released yet, and I'm still recording it. So that's where the other two panels are, which means I think I'm stuck at a total of 900 milliamps tops. But I'm still going to go ahead with this, and perhaps this module idea will mean that I can get another couple of these from Dollar Tree again, and get up to an amp or more than that. Uh, it's not the best, is it? But I'll carry on, and we'll see what we can do with these. So the next thing is some kind of backing to put them onto, and I'm not really sure what to do on that next either. I haven't got a piece of thin wood, plywood type of stuff. I did have some packing materials here that seem to be about the right size. I glued those together, but it's fairly soft and I'm not really that happy with it. I think we're looking at a Goldilocks thing here. This is a door <laughs> from the kitchen. It's an old door that's not used. That's another option, but of course it dips down there. That's not the best. This here was from a yard sale, and it should have been like a graphics tablet, but I never got the pen with it, so, hmm. But that's a flat piece of plastic. I think I might take the insides out of this and use this surface to put the panels on. So the important thing, do they fit? And the answer is yes. Now another thing is, if I do get a couple more panels in the future, I can actually add another one underneath, and it should be flush there. So I'll be able to get up to an amp. So that's really good. I think, yes, I'll use these plastics. I'll take this apart and then fit these. And here it is, all finished up and ready for testing. It looks really quite sleek, I think. It's, uh, it's turned out better than I thought it would. The wires are all nicely hidden and all those panels do give space at the bottom still for an extra 100 milliamps. So it is all finished up and ready. But what isn't ready is the weather. I mean look at the flooding and apparently over the next four days we're looking at a hundred year flood. Oh hey, eh? oh well I'll come back when we've got some sun. Well, this is still awful weather. I've got the car cover on the car because of hail and tornadoes. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have a look at the cloud cover, you know, we're looking at some more rubbish. But the sun does occasionally come out, so I wonder if we can get some readings. So I've got the panel over here. I've got it set to the 20 volt scale. We'll just see what there is for the voltage. I've uh, got a lot of wind coming in now. Okay. Voltage 4.97, 5 volts. Sun is actually out now, so there's your 5 volts. I'll be a bit cheeky and put it over to the larger scale just in case. Put it on the 10 amp scale and see what we can get for amperage. And there we are, without the sun out, 0.38. I'll see if we can uh, wait till the sun does come out. That's pretty good so far though. I'll come back if the sun does come out. Here's the test while we wait. This is the audio recorder, so is there enough voltage and current to begin charging this? Let's have a look. Plug it in. Anything happening? Yes. Yes, it's charging. Would you look at that? There is, even in the shade. That is charging. Oh, fantastic. Oh, wow. This is looking good. Well, the sun is trying to come out. Oh, there we are. Right, so. Wow, okay. Half an amp. Yes, climbing. Come on, 
come out a bit more. There we go. Yeah, wow. 800 milliamps, 830, 800, wow, what the heck? 960 milliamps, 970, 980. Good heavens, it's nearly hit the amp. Oh, that's incredible. It's going back up again. Wow, what's that, 930 then? Oh, I can't wait for some decent weather and try this out properly. But there we are, there's, there's proof. Finally, about 4.3 billion years later, we have a sunny day. So I've brought the panel out here to the back porch. I'll plug in this USB lead into the side and we'll try some devices out. There we go. First thing is going to be this little charge bank here. So plug this in and see what it does. There we are, plugged it in. And if you can see, little red light in there is flashing and that means it's charging. Next along is a larger power bank. It's got a display on it so I'll uh, just plug that in. There we go, plugged in. And it's saying 46% flashing because it's charging. Now here's a good one for a visual. This is a 5 volt USB fan. We'll see, well first of all if it'll run it at all, there's three power settings on it. So we'll plug it in. There we go. Okay, power setting one. <laughs> yes. Running fine. Power setting two. Yep, that's speeded up. And top power, power three. <laughs> Oh, and you can hear the fan. Excellent. Well, that's running absolutely fine. And now for the big question. I've got the panel out on the little walkway here. There's the lead. Let's plug it into this cell phone and see if that can charge. That's the big question. There we go. Plugged in. Do we get anything on the screen? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. There's the charging thing now. Will it show us the percentage? Should do that in a few seconds time. Yeah, there we go. It's at 30%, if you can see that. Oh, fantastic. Right, so, what I've got here is one of those uh, radio control clocks. You know, they get a signal, radio signal from Colorado. So we're saying 11.35. We'll give it till 12.35 and see how much charge has gone on to the phone from 30%. An hour later, and let's have a look. And we're at 54%. You can see that, hopefully, get an angle. So 24%, nearly, nearly quarter of the battery in an hour, so <laughs> that's a great charging solution. And We've proven that uh, you can take the panels of solar garden lights and make a decent charger that will charge a cell phone. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.